Hi, my name is Dennis Rowe, and I'm Vice President and a partner here with the Howarth Group in downtown Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, and we've been helping um, property owners for almost 35 years now with their with their insurance claims. And if you're viewing this video today, you, you may be considering and looking at hiring a public adjuster to help you with the claim. So uh, maybe the question that, that ought to be considered at this point would be, when should you get engaged and hire a public adjuster, a professional who would look after your interest in a claim? And there's two options for you to consider here. If, if you hire a public adjuster shortly after a loss or um, even uh, right before the, the carrier is expected to deliver their estimate here, you're going to end up paying them a percentage uh, of whatever the insurance company uh, ultimately offers, uh, really for uh, sometimes for having put forth very little work or effort up to that point in time. And all, and I, all I mean to say by that is the insurance company isn't going to just let you or your general contractor or you and a public adjuster put together an estimate and take that as their valid claim and one that they have to pay out on. They are going to uh, give you an estimate that's based on their inspection and their training and what they believe is fair and reasonable to indemnify you, to make you whole, to put you back like you were before the loss. Um, that is going to happen. You're going to get an estimate. Um, and so you need to consider that if you hire one now, you're going to be paying them a percentage of whatever the carrier is going to put on the table. Um, many times, carrier, I mean, a public adjuster is going to, um, his compensation will be 8 or 10 or 12 percent uh, of the entire claim here. But let's say it was 10 percent. And if it turns out that the carrier's estimate and their estimate is a million dollars, 10 percent of that right away is going to be paid out to the public adjuster. And a question to consider is, is why would you want to pay anyone? a percentage of what you're going to get anyhow. Um, that's worth some thought. It's worth some discussion with your board or the other property owners that may be involved in making this decision here. Um, the, the second thing I think to consider is what is their incentive, if, you're, if they're getting this kind of compensation, to add additional money to your claim here? And I'm not saying it can't be added, but I, I do question, I do wonder how much more they would be added to your claim here because had they not, have you not in that sort of compensation range, but taking away their incentive to add additional money when the bulk of their compensation, for the most part, has already been achieved with, with little, I'm not saying no effort, but with little effort, some effort on their part to make their own case. Again, it's, it's, worth, it's worth knowing and understanding. And the third thing to consider is, is the risk. What, what if it turns out that the offer by the carrier is good? and it's reasonable, and it's fair, and it's a million dollars, then you've paid and given away 10% of, of, of those monies to a public adjuster. And now, instead of having a million dollars to rebuild that property, you now have $900,000. Well, who bore that risk? It wasn't the public adjuster. It was you, the property owner, that's at, that's at risk when hiring somebody before the carrier has has put their offer on the table. So, what's option two? Option two is, is to consider compensating somebody based only on any new money that they add to your claim. I would think that the, 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 a prudent and, and a wise course of action is to pay for performance, something that's measurable, something that you can see. And when we know that the carrier is offered a million dollars and somebody like us, who will take the time before we ever make uh, any sort of offer to get involved in a claim, who will take the time to read your policy, to review the estimate, to see if it encompasses the full scope of the damage, and to make sure that it lines up with accepted industry standards and practices for restoring maybe hurricane damage property, if that's why you're called, you've had damage from Hurricane Florence or Hurricane Michael. But if, and that's what we're looking at. And if it turns out that, that it's, it's a good estimate, then you won't need our help. And I will tell you, that in our review of, uh, of estimates and reading the policies and understanding the damages here, that 30% of the time, those estimates are good and you won't need us. Now, granted, the majority of the time you would, but it doesn't make sense to me to pay somebody percentage of what you're going to get anyhow, and that ought to be the starting point if it turns out that you stand a 30% chance of that being a good estimate. Um, 
So the compensation, I think, is important for you to understand, and the incentive. Obviously, if we're only getting paid a percentage of any new money that we add to your claim here, um, then we're going to we're going to assess the, the claim when we have a chance to look at it honestly, and we're going to be motivated uh, uh, to to perform in a way that uh, benefits you and us. And then the last thing to consider is risk. If we fail miserably, and if we told you, or I thought that you were due another half million dollars, or or quarter million dollars, or another million dollars. And it turned out that I was wrong, and we didn't advance that one dollar more past this million dollars. Then, then the question again is, who bears that risk? And that risk, instead of being borne by you, the policyholder, the property owners, is borne by us. We're the ones at loss for investing in uh, our time and our talents and our assets to advance in your claim, and you owe us nothing for that. Now that doesn't happen very often because we do have a chance to evaluate uh, those estimates and re read the policy here, but. Um, just some important things for you to consider as you're looking at whether to engage a public adjuster and when you might do so. So if you have any questions, feel free to call the, the number at the bottom of the screen and we'd love to talk to you. Thanks. Mm -hmm.